Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ty Little Gentleman. And for all y'all that want a piece of One Piece, welcome to Wano Piece. So today, we're going through chapters 61 through 80. We left off with Jin facing off against Sanji. This is an incredible battle. Jin is known as a cold-hearted demon because he does whatever it takes to get the job done. If Don Creed tells him something to do, no matter what the task, he does it. But what we find out is after Jin fight Sanji, they're going at it. I mean, there's kicks flying, there's everything smashing, everything's going all crazy. What happens is, when Jin is ready to kill Sanji, he finds himself unable to do it. He's unable to do it because he's never felt this kindness before. So he's never had someone be so kind to him. So he can't kill Sanji because Sanji gave him food when he was hungry. This obviously angers Don Creed because Don Creed can't have insubordination. He can't have pirates just all of a sudden deciding that they're not going to do what, they, what he tells them to, especially because he rules his pirates by fear. So if you think about it, Jin is his second in command. If his second in command is getting wishy-washy and not following the orders, all the other pirates are going to follow suit. So Don Creed decides to fire an MH5 lethal poison gas bomb at Jin and Sanji. Luffy grabs two masks from two of the Don Creed pirates and throws them to Sanji and Jin. So when the bomb hits, just before the bomb hits, Luffy finds another mask and puts that mask on. And when this happens, I was like, oh no. The only reason there's an extra mask left is because Jin decided not to use his mask. So. That's what I'm thinking. When the smoke clears, we see Jen just in a really weird state holding the mask over Sanji to kind of repay him for saving his life. So he saves Sanji's life, but doesn't care about his own life because at the same time he's torn because everything he does is for Don Creek. Carne and Patty take Jen inside to try and help him get better. So. They take him inside to try and help him get better. Next battle we have is Luffy versus Don Krieg. Luffy finally is able to get in contact with Don Krieg. But before he can hit Don Krieg, he has to go through a Kinzen cape. A Kinzen cape is a sort of spike, spike shield cape that goes all around her body. So he broke that out. This guy, Don Krieg, has a ton of weapons. Like, no matter what, he has spears, he has guns, he has bombs, he has spike shields, he has that metal armor on. So, he uses this Kinzen cape. You think this is going to stop Luffy? No, it does not. Luffy punches the Kinzen cape so hard that it hits Don Krieg in the face and lays him flat. All the Don Krieg pirates are like, yo, what did we just witness? Don Krieg just got laid flat. This is crazy. After this, Don Krieg decides, you know what, it's time to use the Great War Spear. The Great War Spear explodes things on contact. He seems to be whooping Luffy's behind, but what we find out is Luffy has been punching the Great War Spear's tip every time it hit him. So it looked like Luffy was just taking shots from the Great War Spear, but all along, Luffy was punching the part that causes the spear to explode. So eventually he breaks the Great War Spear. Luffy breaks out the gum gum bazooka the same way he did to Buggy and breaks Krieg's armor. So all of his armor is off. Now it's on. After that, he breaks out the gum gum sledgehammer and it's over. Sanji decides to join the pirate crew. He decides to join the pirate crew because this can help him find All Blue. All Blue is the place we spoke of before that has all the fish that any cook can ever use like so it's a place where all the fish are in one place all the fish of the world are in one place at the end carne patty all the other pirates are actually crying that sanji leaves sanji actually starts crying the cook is like yo y'all should not be crying men should handle their sorrow in silence I don't necessarily agree with that. I feel like if you need to cry, you go ahead and cry, man. You need to tell people you love them, tell people you miss them while they're here. Next up, we learn about the Ouka Shichibukai, right? I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, comment down below, let me know. So, these are one of three major powers, one of three major powers in the Grand Line. 
Hawkeye's Mihawk is a member of this group, so you know they're powerful. They're a group of seven pirates sanctioned by the government. What that means is the government knows they exist, and the government, as long as these seven pirates pay them, pay the government, the government lets them do what they do. The leader of the Fishman Pirates is Jinbei. Now, in order to join the Owuka Shichibukai, he had to release a beast in the East Blue. That was like his initiation. So he released a beast. Um, this beast, I'm not sure exactly which beast it is yet, but we do meet a sea cow named Momu later on. But this beast works with the Arlong Pirates. Now, Arlong Park is where Nami went to. So everybody's on their way to find Nami because Luffy wants her as their navigator. So everybody's on their way to Arlong Park to find Nami. Arlong Park is ruled by Arlong. He's a fisherman pirate. He's a fisherman pirate, but he broke off from Jim Bay's group. Sidebar, Luffy tried to draw the fishman. It was terrible. Luffy keeps trying to draw stuff and he's just not good at it. There's this marine captain named Mizumi, which stands for mouse because his laugh sounds like a mouse and he kind of looks like a mouse if you look at him. You know how they had the cat pirates look like cats? This guy actually looks like a mouse. He collects the payments from the Arlong pirates. Now, Arlong is the leader of the Arlong is the leader of the Arlong Pirates. His name is Arlong the Saw. He looks more like a shark than a fish. Zoro gets captured by the Arlong Pirates because he was just trying to storm into Arlong Park. So Johnny and Johnny and Usopp tied him up. Now when a boat appeared which, which had fishmen pirates on it, they both abandoned ship and left Zoro there by itself, which I don't think is cool. You should never leave your friends like that. Usopp and Johnny end up in Gosa Village. What we notice about Gosa Village is all the houses and buildings are upside down. And there's a big clear path through the middle. Looks like one of those sea cows or uh, sea kings have come through and destroyed some stuff. So, we find out that the reason this village was destroyed because one person couldn't pay. If one cook person can't pay their tribute to the Arlong Pirates, they come through and destroy the whole town. Fishmen are said to be 10 times as strong as humans. Usopp runs into this lady named Nojiko. Nojiko is actually the foster sister of Nami. So Nami, Nami's sister, Nojiko, saves Usopp from the Fishmen Pirates by knocking him out and just getting him out of the situation. She's the one that drops this bomb on us that Nami is a member of the Arlong Pirates. So Nami's been a member of the Arlong Pirates this whole time. That just kind of sent me like, boom, like what? Like then they show her tattoo, she's got a tat. She's got a tat, you know, if you get a tat for something, you really down for something. So, just when we think Nami is just this devil witch person that they keep saying and she only cares about herself, she only cares about money, she frees Zoro. But when she frees Zoro, Zoro kills a bunch of the fishmen pirates. Zoro's just nice like that. And he did it with only one sword because if you remember, his other two swords were broken. While Nami's freeing Zoro, Arlong and some of his other pirates are in the other village. No one in the villages under Arlong pirate control are allowed to have weapons. Jinzu had weapons and Arlong was making an example of him. So he was beating him up and just as he was about to kill him, Usopp saved him with a gunpowder star, you know, a slingshot. And um, this basically just made, this basically just made Arlong very, very mad. So they started chasing Usopp again Usopp ends up connecting with the rest of the group. They all hear Nojiko's story. Nojiko tells them the story of how and why Nami became an Arlong pirate. The reason she's an Arlong, Arlong pirate is because she's saving up enough money to buy the village back from them. 
She wants to buy the vi- the village back from the Arlong pirates because that's the only thing that Arlong respects is money. That's it. So if she can make a payment of 100 million, 100 million belly at once, then they'll free that village. Nami at one point had to stab Usa in order to make it appear that she was still 100% down for the Arlong pirates. But Usopp was still alive, so this is good. They hear all of Nami's story from Nojiko. Their mother, their foster mother, her name was Bellamere. Bellamere was actually a retired Marine who took these two girls in, and she raised them as her own. She did the best she could, but they didn't have much. She was killed by Arlong, the pirate. So this is why, in the last few chapters, Nami was so concerned looking at that wanted poster that Yosaku and Johnny had. Nami struck a deal with the Arlong pirates to make them maps and to also get that money to free the village. Marine ships do come to Arlong Park and try and save the villagers and they try to take out the Arlong pirates. Now the issue is the Arlong pirates are so strong. So three officers went out to stop this this um, marine ship that came in close and fired a cannonball. So they fire a cannonball. The cannonball comes flying in right to where Arlong's sitting. He catches it in his mouth and just eats it like it's nothing. Like some people eat a punch. He eats a cannonball. That's wild. So then they send out uh, three of the officers. Chu, um, who's a, a Japanese whiting style fisherman. They send out Kurubi, who's like a manta ray, and Hachi, who's an octopus fisherman. They all go out. Uh, Chu gets on the boat, and in the middle of Commodore Purin Purin, the head leader of the marine ship, in the middle of him trying to negotiate, he just hits him with a, a like a water bullet from his mouth, just pew. Kurubi breaks off the rudder of the ship. And then um, that makes it hard for the marine ship to move around, to maneuver. He breaks off the rudder. And then lastly, Hachi brings a reef over towards where they're going. Now, since they move the reef in the current, it caused a whirlpool, because they know everything about water. It caused a whirlpool and sunk the ship. So three fishermen sunk a whole ship. That just shows that it's easier for marines like Captain Nizumi to just come and take the bribes and keep pushing it. Now the issue with that is Arlong doesn't want to break his deal with Nami. So he instead, he sends the captain, Nizumi, to go and look for Nami's treasure she's been saving up near her house. Um, she realizes that Arlong double-crosses her and the chapter 80 stops with her confronting Arlong. She's confronting him like, like you would confront your friend that stole something from you. Like, yo, we're supposed to be boys, but he's kind of putting her in a place. He grabs her by her whole head, and that's where chapter 80 ends. Definitely tell me what was your favorite part out of these chapters, out of these 20 chapters. Let me know what your favorite part was. Please like, comment, subscribe. We're going to grow the channel. We're going to create a community. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.